Finally, the movie that asks the question that every X-Men fan is wondering, where did Wolverine get his jacket? We watched X-Men Origins Wolverine. This is In Defense of Bad Movies. <laughs> Hey everybody, Sam here with another In Defense of Bad Movies episode. Hey Laura! Hi! <laughs> I, I just psyched you out as to which no, one, which I one was listening you. to the crickets. Hi crickets! Yeah, we have crickets. It is not um, because our jokes are so bad. It might be. But we just have crickets in this house. Hey Bobby! Hey bub! <laughs> hey! I'm not sure how to answer your question. I was thinking about how did he get his jacket and I don't really care. I, I know, that's that's kind of the point of the intro. Oh, so, okay, like, okay, I'm sorry. I, I point out a stupid thing in the, in the movie, oh, gotcha. or, I, or I make a joke about us needing sponsors. Our new segment, Laura and Sam Explain Jokes. <laughs> hey, Lauren. How do jokes work? Uh, well, I don't, I'm not here, we're not here to explain that. Um, um, how's everyone doing? Well. So. Well, what? <laughs> well, good. Oh. Well, we, I mean, you guys are really good because we watched um, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Well, let's just clarify. The people who are defending this movie are Sam and Lauren. Yes. Not me or Bobby. Really? Because Bobby's been doing the X-Men marathon. It feels like if anyone would be excited, it would be him. Super excited, guys. I, before we get to anything, mm-hmm. I'm going to say we have a couple concessions. Mm-hmm. A few few things. You're going like, to start with the concessions? I already disagree. You're not going to give them up begrudgingly? A, a couple concessions? Uh, there's a few concessions. Deadpool was handled all wrong, yeah. and Gambit was not handled well. Uh, I'll agree to that. We don't need to know the origin to every little, you know, thing. Yeah, that kind of, you know, if we don't need it, we don't really actually need to see Wolverine's origins, because they're not really that interesting. Done. <laughs> oh, We're done. We're wow. walking out now. Wow. Yeah. That's a crazy-ass <laughs> statement. And, and one other one that I... There might be a few... No! But I'm... But I'm That's... But I'm, you know what? That's... An angel rips out its wings every time I, anytime I, anyone says this, but I'm going to agree with Laura. What? Yep. <laughs> you guys, like, if anyone has an interesting backstory, it's Wolverine. Like, yeah. if you're going to do Not really. It, not really. He's totally interesting. His it's whole, the so amount of light. I'm that's, not saying. That's a very complicated uh, issue, and as told by this, I mean, not his origin itself, but whether or not his origin is interesting or whether it needed to be told, I think. I don't know. There's there's a lot that goes into that. Like you but argue, this movie does not yeah, tell a compelling say, origin story at all. You could argue to the quality of the telling here, but I still feel like, ooh, that absolutely I don't know. I there's think a he's movie a more there. interesting character if you don't know much about him. Like you don't know, you just kind of he's kind of rough on the outside, and he is very you know he keeps everything bottled up. To me, I don't really want to know where he came from. He has these flashbacks of you know being in the tank, you know, and stuff. But that's all I need to to know. I don't need to know his you know. And he, we don't even. We still don't even know how he how he gets these like character like how does he get these claws? He's, I mean, a mutant. he's just he's just yeah. born that way. He, yeah, yeah, that's, he was that's a mutant mutantism. Born with the bone spurs coming yeah. out of his but, well, arms. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to interrupt before we before <laughs> we the, should I have, talk about what this movie is about. So many yeah. things yeah. But I also want to throw out my third concession, which is his knives are cartoons. There, there's one scene where he's, looking, where he's looking in the mirror and it becomes Roger who's playing Roger really it's yeah. nuts yeah it's really it's bad it's so bad it's really bad having said all that um, Lauren you're getting at your timer absolutely you ready uh, this For is gonna be our, awkward now this is an origin story so I say we're gonna give 20 seconds how's that work sure so, it's gonna take a while Oh, excuse me. All right, Laura. Now we want we want a synopsis of the movie. Yes, no. And twenty seconds. I've given synopsis for the past nice. movies, like ever since the cut. It's chastised for it. It's Laura's twenty second movie synopsis. I have to say right. the name of the segment mm-hmm. for legal reasons. Mm-hmm. Now go for it. <laughs> okay, uh, so we learned the origin story of Wolverine from a kid on to now in the, in the present. Uh, he had he kind of parts ways with his. Um, other group of mutants, including his brother. And then um, his brother um, is out to kill all the mutants. And then we find time. out there's a lot of time. backstabbing. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Time. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's a lot of backstabbing going on, okay? <laughs> a lot of twists and turns. Okay. Wait, he's out to kill all mutants? 
No, only the ones who are in the select Okay, group. just the ones who are like the yeah. Enigma Force so, 5. Gotcha. Yeah, he, he was in this this group of mutants. Who I don't... Were, did, was there a name? Did they give himself... Nah, they name? were just super yeah. covert. Task Force oh. X. Yeah. No, that's not it. Legion. No, that's not it. Oh, I didn't write it down. <laughs> that was a stupid name. Yeah, <laughs> um, I didn't write it down. So yeah, I, I, I like I said, I'm I'm conceding it's not a perfect movie. I still I think it's a fun, good romp. I wouldn't mind spending more time though on how uninteresting Taylor Kitsch is and how that was a terrible you choice know, for Gambit. Okay. I think Taylor yeah. Kitsch is okay, but I think, I think that yeah. you know you take the back because he's not. Um, <laughs> he's on the par with our well documented. First off, I don't know why I don't know why Gambit potato face. Okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't necessarily know why Gambit is this like holy grail of a character that I. nerds are like. Oh my god, we got to yeah, have the guy who throws cards. But like Taylor Kitsch is, I don't know, he's okay. Have you, you read cut. much in the com- read about him in the comics much? Because I'm because cl- I, I watched the show. I watched a handful of com- read a handful of comics. Mm-hmm. So, but maybe if you if you have read the comics, you feel this form. You have That's this. I think it's, like I'm sure he's. Really I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's entirely from the animated series. You could be right. Really? Yeah, because I don't think a ton of people are reading X Men comics. I think a lot of people watch the X Men cartoon as a kid. You know. Yeah, <laughs> that that could be the case. Then yeah, I, I agree that I definitely don't get the why Gambit yeah. is held as like such obviously, a love piece when Nightcrawler is obviously the Jubilee you know, is the <laughs> is the one. <laughs> she makes fireworks, guys. <laughs> so, but, uh, and just particularly like if this was the moment to have Gambit and like, all right, this is what everyone's excited well, about. Oh, this it's guy. It's so transparently just like fan pandering. Like at the time, people were like, "We got to put Deadpool in a movie, and we got to put Gambit in a movie." And okay, they they did. I hope everyone <laughs> they, was happy. They put characters <laughs> with those names in it. <laughs> From my point of view, especially since I guess the Deadpool is kind of a continuation of this universe, uh-huh. that is a just another person who happens to look just like Deadpool, and <laughs> but he's not Deadpool. Do you feel like someone was mad, like sick of getting all these messages, like put Gambit in the movie, put I, Deadpool in the movie, like fine, we'll put him in our movie, but we're gonna mess him up? I honestly feel like it was like, well, let's give those nerds what they want, yeah. you know, like oh, it's so awesome, we're gonna have Deadpool in this movie, we're gonna have Gambit in this movie, and it's like. We have Will I Am in this movie. Those were handled by people who felt like they didn't understand what the characters were, for sure. I agree. Absolutely Deadpool, and even the rest as well. I feel bad singling them out, though, because there's five billion characters in this movie, (laughs) and none of them are handled well. (laughs) Yeah, let's back up, shall we? Yeah, let's let's go back to this. So, we start this movie, and um, we see Wolverine as a young child, Mm -hmm. and his father... In the 1800s. Imagine Mm -hmm. the life he would have led. Yeah. And all that time. I see... Oh, I think the longevity of him is so interesting. I don't. I, I, I don't think it's ever handled well in any of the other movies or even really mentioned in the other movies. I, I but mean, this is, I mean, this is the moment where you find yeah. out. Like, in the movie, we don't really know. I know, we but know see, ages. like, that doesn't add anything to him as a character. I mean, like, I'm, I, I rewatched so the other movies and I'm like, I, that doesn't have any bearing on his That's character in any of the other movies. I, I think it's so interesting. I think, but... I mean, I think that, I'm like comparing it to Logan. I'm going to interrupt for just a second and say that, like, you can interject and after. Um, I just wanted to say that comparing this movie to Logan, which, you know, it's made a, quite a while later. So they've had time to kind of fine tune Wolverine. But I just think that he is so much more interesting in Logan than he is in this movie. And it's because they kind of contain him he's kind of self-contained to just that movie, you know, like he's isolated, he's a loner, you know, we don't really need to know that much about him, but we still, I mean, we all, we have all the other X-Men movies to compare it to, um, to add on, add to him. But I, I don't think that knowing like, Oh, he's from the 18th century does anything for me anyway. I think I agree with what you're saying to a point. Like I, I, I think that detail of Logan's backstory is interesting that he's, Hundreds of years old. I think the way it's handled is stupid. Like mm-hmm. I think introducing us to Logan way back when, and then running him through a super cheesy opening credit scene of him like fighting mm-hmm. through every oh, war. I, I really like the opening credit. Scene. I like the opening credit scene too. And I, it's not just like montage of war. It's like the slow separation of him and uh, Creed. Like just the, as Creed becomes more animalistic and unhinged, and like. As you know, Creed, Wolverine, like, yeah, that seems Wolverine like back. that seems like, like a really Jordan? good. That seems like a really good important character, like 
development yes, to 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 run off in an opening credit scene. But it's just beginning to touch on it, and then that becomes you know sort of a fuel for the rest. Don't of the even film. don't even. That's bad writing. Don't introduce <laughs> it that way. Like yeah. introduce them separated before you talk about them together. I guess like it's yeah. just it's weird to introduce a character, say like here's the complete history of their relationship in two minutes, and then like like it's weird that there's. 30 minutes of prologue to this movie before like the plot actually starts and it feels like uh-huh. we sprint through it but no i mean going back to what laura was i mean going back to the idea of the um of wolverine being super old like it's interest the wolverine is a super flawed movie but mm-hmm. starting it in you know world war Two at the bombing of hiroshima and having we'll put placing wolverine there is really interesting i think yeah contain wolverine within the movie better but um I, I like you that detail. You can't contain him in one movie. He's too tough. He's going to bust out that movie. And, and I will say that there is something inherently non-character building when it ends the movie with him losing his memory. Because, yeah, I yeah. mean, you you honestly, you can't use any of that ex- unless it comes back later in his life as um, as any character building thing because he's not taking any of it with him. Yeah. So you sort of are sad, kind of right on that one. So to me, I see this as a self-contained story up until this point. Like maybe like an origin story, like, oh, here's how we got to here. But you're right, it does not. I will say, yeah, you're right. It does not add anything to the character. Um, having said that, I enjoyed this story. It is the fun of like going back and seeing... I like it, the intrigue. Just... The origin story of Wolverine mm-hmm. in general, like yes. the intrigue of his life so, and like getting involved as Weapon X and how that comes about. Like, yeah. I I love Wolverine as character. I mean, like, that's, you know, the movies have done an amazing job of making him cool. He was cool before, mm. and so like I, I am coming from the position of like I want more Wolverine, and so yeah. Hugh Jackman like, is really good too. He's I mean, great. as Wolverine, he's, he's not fantastic. saying this movie. His, I stayed as Wolverine, yeah, for yeah. all the movies. His hair is he's glorious, fantastic, but in this movie. glorious. Yes, it is very glorious. Yeah, you can't no deny that. It's, it's, you can't deny that. It's, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's That's really all good. natural. I'm mean, like, natural. even the fanboys have to yeah. be like, okay, they didn't put him in that stupid, he, the, the pointy peaks. thing, but it's just beautiful hair. So he did how can you argue? Such intense training to get that hair. Just I know, right. but like, it's like <laughs> months when you watch the routine. Wolverine, you just like and see him shirtless the whole time, and he's just got like gorgeous abs too. So the guy is shredded like lettuce. <laughs> he's like got so much so many steroids in the Wolverine it's like they don't even hide it they're like come on you know come on we're gonna show it all you know? I would say his muscles have muscles but more to the point his veins have veins <laughs> <laughs> yes tributary is a- yeah <laughs> some people call them capillaries no those are veins so so Wolverine's tortured origin which we learn pretty much in full in this movie is that he's in love with a gal she gets fridged <laughs> because that means that she gets is this a thing the kids are saying nowadays like woke is what is yes. fridged Fr- fridged is a term meaning <laughs> like she was l- lady, lady love interest gets gets killed in the first oh, act yes. to give him mm-hmm. Uh, motivation. It comes from That's the fair. Green Lantern. When a the Green Lantern, <laughs> a Green Lantern, an old Green Lantern comic had, um, I think it's the Green Lantern, had had the Green Lantern coming home to his girlfriend being having been murdered and stuffed into a fridge. So his That's uh, horrible. Yeah, it's really bad. But that is actual a that term. A thing that yeah, happens. fridged, <laughs> fridging, fridging the love interest. I assume in this the was like act. when kids are playing in an empty lot and there's like an abandoned fridge and they close themselves inside and the no. door locks because they didn't have that safety. I thought feature it had before. to do with Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> no, I thought it was just a euphemism for being killed. Oh, and uh, I uh, no, fr- fr- fridging means killing the love interest in the first act to give to give our character no, 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 no. motivation. I like it. That's fun. Um, so, no, it's John not Wick, fun, John Lauren. Wick's it's wife. misogynist. Okay, I don't mind John Lewis' <laughs> wife getting fridged. It's the dog lazy fridged? more than anything. No, it is for sure. It's the old. But so, so old like chestnut. love interest, love interest gets killed in the first act. He thinks it's his brother. He agrees to go through experimentation. He love interest with his brother? No, he thinks his brother killed. killed I know, I'm killed her. Oh, oh his but, brother is bad too. By the way, like after his brother is saber tooth. Long, yeah, saber tooth. Which is, is, by the way, where this is where. X Men movies have the worst continuity of any movie series I've ever <laughs> seen. They've way retconned a lot because yeah. they keep passing. And so many having hands. bad continuity is fine, especially for a comic book property. But X Men keeps insisting on trying to correct its continuity problems when they're so egregiously bad. And they start here with, like, with Victor Creed and and Sabretooth, yeah. like a character who was in the very first X Men yeah. movie who 
had That's never met Wolverine. Has list. no yeah. relationship with Wolverine. He should have been he, shot in the brain with Leah the... Shriver is Victor Creed. In this movie. Also but he was oh, Magneto's okay. like feral. It's apparently his name, even though Creed is neither Howlett nor Logan. So we're not sure where the Creed comes from. When what, the where surnames of the two gentlemen It's like they the should have <laughs> slowed down a little bit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe there's your movie. Yeah. But but so he agrees to undergo this experimentation. Everyone tells him it's going to be the most painful thing he endures. And we're led to believe that because he screams for like a minute and <laughs> almost dies. But then after that, it's cool. He's got these metal claws. Like there's really no like angry going back like, oh, my God, I can't believe my skeleton's filled with metal. He's just like, oh, cool. I got like if it was a video game, this is the moment where your character gets upgraded to be cooler. <laughs> and then he finds out like his girlfriend lied to him and everything's been like it's just it's such a it's such a tedious and like contrived series of events. But like I don't understand where anything is more inherently like where anything's more traumatic about this origin story than anything else that's happened to Wolverine ever. You know, like <laughs> like the experimentation, which we're led to you know, up until this point we're thinking, oh my gosh, this experiment this experiment that gave him the adamantium clause, it ruined his life. Like what this is such a horrible thing that happened. And really he's in a bath for a minute and he screams and then he's like cooler and afterwards. I know we don't have the time for it, but I do like that they kind of try to fix it again with their continuity fixing later. But that like it should break him a little bit, and maybe he comes yeah. back from it. Yeah. But like, yeah. for him to go crazy for a little while, like he does in the books, and like he does, you know, and he does, will be fun. He, he does in uh, in the in most Apocalypse. recent one, Apocalypse, yeah. which is the best part of that movie. It's still ridiculous that <laughs> Jane is there. But. It's really strange to me too that he trusts Striker so Gene. much. Gene, Gene, yeah. okay, he that. has this trust with oh, Striker. You know, so like he, Jean Grey, Jean Grey. Um, he just he trusts Striker and. Impact. Like, he just believes everything he says because he's so frustrated. Like, I don't know. He, you know, Striker comes to him. This is the second actor playing Striker, right? This is yes. The yeah. Second one. yeah. Um, and we're just, you know, he doesn't seem like he's trustworthy, but then Wolverine's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I feel like I, I feel like Wolverine is in a position where he has to. Like, I think they try to establish that, you know, he left the group because he doesn't agree with all the genocides. And, yeah. you know, well, even when Stryker... Did they, oh, did they establish that? I don't yes. really know. Yeah. yeah. Like, when they're yeah. in the African village and, like, they're oh, killing everyone trying to find the adamantium. Part. And then when he comes to the logging village and is like, come, I'll talk to you, like, he... Mm-hmm. You know, shoes them away. Right. I forget about that because there were like yeah. seven fight scenes in exactly. the first half hour. So, I don't know. Oh, there's too many fight scenes. Like, that's a thing. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I think they do try to establish that he doesn't trust him, but due to the circumstance yeah. and the fringing of his girlfriend, like, because he yeah. is willing to. Side he, with he, him. he has, he, so he knows, obviously, he knows about the pain, but, but he also, I think, he knows that. Oh, it's also like, yeah, you're gonna have to come back and and be our guy again because we didn't just put all this stuff into yeah. you for the hell. Of and it. maybe his position is like, yeah, right, I'm coming back. I'm just gonna kill. The yeah, kid you're lo- you're loading me with all this crap. Good luck containing. <laughs> and Stryker has no contingency plan for like, yeah. what if he wakes up angry and tries to escape, and now he's stronger than all of us? <laughs> oh. Does that seem likely? No. He needed Magneto there to keep him in line. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not friends, so no. <laughs> So how about when um, when Wolverine goes and visits Ma and Pa Kent? <laughs> I was I wrote that down in my yeah. list. Yeah, they, I just started referring to them as the, the Kents. Yeah, this movie has really weird pacing issues. It goes from each scene very choppy and yeah, and, yeah. Hap- <laughs> and it's not like I, I don't know. I I don't think I think that the maybe some of the ideas if they're going to show them as an origin story that. They could have um, streamlined it a lot better. That's fair. I I mm. think that that could maybe be a big problem for the this movie. I mean, it's just boring. Like it's really long and it's just really boring. You know what? Um, this is probably not going to be. This is probably going to strike a strike against us. But um, going into watching it again, it was like like okay, this is going to be a really long movie. It's going to be like two and a half hours. It's like an hour 47. That's not that long. We watched the extended cut. We yeah, we, it was an hour, an hour 57 or something like that with the extended cut. So it's really not that long. We cannot find the extended cut. What Do you know what? On Amazon? Amazon? Uh, yeah. You no, we didn't, we didn't do Amazon. You looked in one place and didn't find it? Yeah, but no, my, 
Well, my question was going to be is uh, what what was new in the extended cut? I could not place yeah. it. And sure, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but there was nothing that felt like this is a whole new scene. It was probably just like extending. It'd be interesting stuff. if there was like connective tissue that like if we had watched the extended version, we would have been like, this is really good. That's true. I wonder yeah. if was something we, about I was just were watching right before we came. We were watching the rogue. It's the road <gasps> cut. Yeah, uh, the road cut. Days of Future. Oh, right. I watched the road I cut want to so see that too. And it adds uh, two new things, right? To it. Yeah. Where were at we least. watching it? Mm-hmm. Bobby bought it. Wow. They showed the yeah. scene. I, I'm sure I saw this the first time when um, when Wolverine's father like molested uh, Creed. Oh, they showed that right? No. No. Oh, they should have. They should have in both movies. <laughs> that, we I didn't see it either. But there's a missing bit of connection between Wolverine and Creed in that very first scene that I, we were. Yeah, like, it's a little confusing. I have I have a question about. Did, that. Was that in there? No, or no, is I'm, that I'm, in messing the I'm totally oh. messing around. Um, I do have a question about that opening thing, though. Oh, you're so, messing around? Yeah, yeah sorry. Jeez, oh, I'm sure. like... Oh, no, that's, yeah, that's yeah. nothing. That's terrible. So, <laughs> did Wolverine and, and Sabretooth have the same father? Not in any of the books. This is the no, first no, no. time. I mean, in this movie. I think that's the implication, yeah. yes. Then why did the guy who was I mean, the implication, purportedly... The, statement. the implication was they were, like, full brothers, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, the, I don't think so, because... The probably different moms, at least half-brothers. The mom says, like, oh, he's not even your father. He wasn't even your father. That's what... Yeah. Was, I, who, who, no, somebody else said that. I forget who said that. Was the it? woman in this. Was it the I think it was, yeah. yeah. But that's what... But why did they hire an actor who looks... Just like <laughs> Hugh Jackman to be the fake father. He did look a And then like they hired an actor that looked just like Liev Schreiber. To I can be tell you why, head. actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's a very good comic called Wolverine Origin. And um, they play that. I'm wondering if they had planned for that part to be longer. They play that fake out where there's a guy who looks exactly like Wolverine, mm-hmm. who is his son is, I guess, the stand in for it wasn't actually Victor Creed in the comic. Uh-huh. But they play that fake out where you think that guy's going to be Wolverine for the first act of that comic. Uh, and then you realize cool. that, like, the kind of the meek kid is actually Wolverine. Okay. Like, it's just a fake out from the comic. But I think it's a reference to that comic. But it makes things okay. a whole lot more confusing is in the it, movie. Why was his father killed or his not his father killed? We don't know, right? <laughs> just like a, um, it was like a town quarrel or something. Uh, it's uh, quarrel. Oh, I want to look up and not mess up the actual story but you know mom having an affair with this like lesser guy and so so are they half bro- i'm so confused no, i guess I, they are full bro- brothers they're in the movie they said it and it's not supported in the text but i'm just going to personally believe that sh- that whoever told them that they are full brothers was lying and that the guy who looked just like you jackman <laughs> was the father that's fair. so like i said it's not supported in the text but that's what i'm choosing to believe <laughs> So that why'd she say he wasn't even your real father? <laughs> was it the mom who said that? I don't remember. Yeah. It was the mom. I oh, think. okay. I'm so confused. Because the I takeaway mean, is that they're brothers, right? It's yeah. like a really... Yeah. It's, it really poorly sets that up. Suggested, so oh, that's... so they don't think they're brothers. They think they're half-brothers, right? Do they? They, or... they do not know that they're brothers. Okay. And it's supposed to be that, you know, he's born Wait, to the Hallets. How did you get that? Did you just... Are you just out of me, or did you read that somewhere, or did they say something? Because I don't remember them saying anything in the first scene. The movie is establishes the one guy is Victor's dad, yeah. right? And then the guy who looks just like Victor. Yeah, and then and then I think when they're down there fighting, I feel like and Logan is the name of Victor's dad. So um, I feel like he. It's a good thing we don't have a big listenership because so many people would be emailing <laughs> this would be us. Being They'd be pissed. screaming. Yeah. But that's okay because I listen to how this get made and scream sometimes that's when they're way off on yeah. something. Um, anyway, so yes. But so somehow they communicate that, like, I'm your real father, kid. You yeah. know, Obi Wan lied to you. And so that happens. Yeah. And then Creed runs after him and is like, dude, we're brothers. Yay. I mean, the takeaway is there's, there's, there's two dads there's in two that dads. first scene. My two dads. And you figure that one kid belongs to each dad, and then you find yeah. out that both yeah. kids actually belong to one yeah. dad. Yes. Yeah. And then Victor right away is like, we got to stick with each other because we're brothers. They have very similar powers. So Here. they obviously come from the same genetics. I'm going to take it back. Not my, obviously. I, I don't know. Yeah. My theory is, well, that's, that's another thing that bothers me about the X-Men world when two, X, two um, 
mutants who have powers have a kid mm-hmm. who has a third completely set of powers. Maybe this is not just, how genetics work. It's just the mutant gene. You're just born with like the no. gene that's passed down. So you no. have some no. sort of thing. No. And that just is manifesting now, sure, but in the future no. when this acceleration happens. No. I reject this. And, and just, that bothers me about this world. <laughs> As I'm going on and I'm reminding myself of what actually happens and it's I feel they should have done more with like the kid stuff because the his actual history in Canada is interesting, dark and interesting. Yes, and, like I remember that's being the whole that. movie. That's your that's your origins movie. <laughs> that, or even do just that. Spend a little more time with that it would be fun. And, and I would argue, like we because I I we watched the X Men movies in order leading up to Origin. It's a big moment in X Two where Wolverine, who's been chasing his origin this whole time, chooses to leave Stryker behind. And also all the answers from Alkali behind. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he makes a decision that yeah. he's going to move forward with his life and not worry about all those details. It undercuts it to then go back in a movie and explain everything that happened to Alkali poorly, poorly, <laughs> not interestingly. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. It undercuts Wolverine's decision. No, it makes that more even more tragic because he's not finding about, about this woman he loved. And, and besides, it doesn't, it doesn't affect... His decision, it's just saying, okay, viewers, we know you wanted to know, so we're going to show it to you. <laughs> or just like, I don't know, man. I can't help but feel like we're leaving a way more interesting movie behind in the first two minutes to go to, like, Stryker, Diminishing Returns, the character. Like, <laughs> like in all the drama that surrounds him. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm going to say this. I'm going to go back a little bit because I do think that my belief that they have two different fathers is supported in the text because, again, the guy looks just like... Um, Hugh Jackman and the fact that she doesn't know she wants it to be this guy she's having the affair with but she was probably having sex with both guys at the same time so it can only be assumed that it's the guy who looks like Hugh Jackman's real father <laughs> continue you know this is there is no argument here because it's just my opinion <laughs> Well, this is why this movie blows. Because no. Because you don't even I'm know. I'm standing by Laura on that one. <laughs> There's no clarity in that scene. It's such, like, muddled storytelling. It's so mm. bad. Like, well, I and I don't think you should be... To watch that movie, you shouldn't have had to read the comics, too. Oh, I agree. No. Yeah. I, I feel like... And, I mean, I, I think... feel like if you didn't know what was happening, you'd at least have, like, okay, I you can follow the story. Is it as good as it could be? No. Uh, like, uh, it's certainly... I feel like knowing the comics would be worse, because you'd be like, wait, but what this, about this, this part? This fucking movie here. doesn't follow the comics. Like, yeah, it's a true. it's a huge departure from the comics. <laughs> like, if you if you follow the comics, you're going to be more confused. It <laughs> definitely does its own thing. It's just... I, I have a question. How did you guys like the action sequences? I hated them. There were <laughs> so many of them, and they all just kind of... Wolverine together. flying toward a helicopter. Come on, that's, that's awesome. I... I don't even remember when that was because I just remember the. It was when he flew to the helicopter. Yeah, it's when he takes down a shooty shooty guy right after Mon Pa Kent, the guy who shoots. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, that guy. That was like, yeah. That was the one like inspired action bit in the movie, but like action for the most part is like Wolverine running away from shit. (laughs) Wolverine like Wolverine like quick like a million cuts in one scene. You know, Wolverine PG-13 slashing people. Like, it's just not... <laughs> oh, my favorite... <laughs> interesting. <laughs> my favorite is when he, he pulls... Uh, I don't think it was Wolverine. I think it was somebody else. But he um, pulls, like, the knife out of somebody. And that knife is... Yeah, it was Wolverine. Just completely... It was, sh- it was his claws. claws. Okay, clean. that was... It looks like they were freshly shined. So this just came out of a guy's body. There should be blood all over it, but it was... I'm like, I, I think Wolverine... I don't know. You... But then again, it's hard to animate blood, uh, realistic blood, on your very unrealistic claws. In theory, Wolverine's awesome because he's a guy with, like, knives on his hand, built into his hands. But, like, I don't... You have to work harder to do an interesting action scene with Wolverine because it's just going to be... If you're lazy about it, like this movie is, it's going to be Wolverine running around, like, waving his fists at people while they fall down. Like, he doesn't shoot laser beams out of his eyes. He doesn't, you know, like levitate anything he's just like a brawler and no well, that's one what the berserker rage and is, a baller is good for right. <laughs> and so like i don't you, you know the series has i mean if you take the x-men series as a whole like you either have like when you really successfully do action scenes with logan you have like or you have like in the movie logan you have you, consequences Lo- <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, you have you 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 focus on how brutal and how horrifyingly violent Logan is, or like you do something 
weird and creative and inspired like having logan fight on top of a bullet train but like (laughs) having him run around and just like wave fists at people and having the camera cut away like a million times because that's just a lazy action director move like i I don't i'm gonna kind of disagree with you because um there is uh we mentioned john wick earlier Mm -hmm. that is just a lot of fist fighting and a lot of gun yeah. fighting too, but it's but it is it can it's be well done. single takes. Like I don't, yeah. it's directed in a completely different no, way. No, but I'm saying you can take you can have the character have mm-hmm. him have interesting fights and stuff. Yeah, like but Gavin Hood doesn't know how to do. That. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, what about what about the fight scene with um, fake Deadpool? Oh, that it was sense. the most contrived thing. Like the, at the very very end yeah. where they're fighting on top of the silo. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I don't know. Oh, that's, I don't care about the... Okay, contrived... Whatever. I, but, like, <laughs> the actual a- action itself. No, it's weird. Like, they're fighting on a... There's, like, no no sense of physics to it. Like, they're that's fighting... The only thing I remember... Because I've seen this movie. <laughs> and I just, like... I, when oh, I, you've seen this movie? Yeah, I saw this movie oh. before. And I always think of that scene when I think of this uh-huh. movie. And I'm like, ah. Oh, no, I, I, think the, uh, I think the silo fight's super awkward. Like, they're <laughs> fighting on this, like, weird curve. Like, there's no danger of anyone falling off the silo until, like, you know, the silo comes down. Both Wolverine and Creed fought, like, land off the silo without getting hurt. Like, it's just the weirdest, like, action set piece I ever. I scene was so cool with Deadpool leaping back and forth between them and fighting them. I thought that was cool. I liked it. Uh, whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, like, also, it's what, um... Will I Am was doing for the whole <laughs> first part of that movie, right? Yeah, like, was, yeah. I don't know. Well, we only got the one scene with Creed William slash um, Sabretooth's um, weird twist, like his like good bad good again. Like his arc is really strange in this movie. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to think of him as a character. This movie did not help at all. <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah. I mean. I don't want to say say Shriver was was bad. No, because it's not true. Because Leo Shriver is amazing. Laura is what you're looking for right now. His motivations were muddy. He's doing your classic. He Leo Shriver was fine. This character is written Uh, as. Leaf Shriver's amazing. Yeah, Leaf Shriver's character. Maybe there was writing problems. It's no. not Leaf Shriver's fault. He's incredible. That, that character is a total fucking mess. But no, Leaf Shriver's fine. Like, no, I have no problems with this. It's classic. They are both, and this is not necessarily. I mean, are we, we actually fully going to Are we going to make the <laughs> distinction between classic and cliche? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they are, uh, both Wolverine and uh, Sabretooth, especially with the extra pressure of being brothers, are having a similar journey. Do you give in to your animalistic instincts and this baser part of you and just become this violent berserker as Creed is going into or do you try to continue to be good and be human as Wolverine is trying to do even though they keep trying to pull him back in and so you have the two I sides of that coin. I actually would have liked to have seen that and because I know, and like I said, I'm not I, I think that's know. generous <laughs> it is, yeah. it's, 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 it's <laughs> what the movie wanted to do, does it do it successfully? Nah. I, 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 like I said, I don't have a yeah. huge relationship with the comics but I know there is that whole Wolverine Berserker rage, so but you don't really see that. You see him get pissed off and do things, but it's it's justified pissed off. And and I would like to I actually red. wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of that and like we we're going in diff- we're we're we do kinda of have this impulse, yeah. but we're going in different directions. It would be it. nice. And so, you know, or they've like, been buddy buddy, like nearly immortal for the past Mm-hmm. Um, of 70 years and so I mean all this is a move of Victor wants his brother to come with him and so his you know after Wolverine leaves Enigma Force 5 like him going around and killing all these it, you know he's trying to get Wolverine back into the group because he wants his brother back and yeah. so I think that the twist at the end totally makes sense because like oh well, I, we have a common this enemy we can work wants. to and like yeah. even though we're on different sides of things like yeah now we're together again we're fighting and that's what I love most but of course that can't last mm-hmm. because the book says so <laughs> And because they're very different people. Oh, yes, that too. <laughs> that's that a really interesting way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds good. I just, yeah. I just, wish, very, yeah. it's what's I just there. wish the text supported yes. that. <laughs> it's what's there, but the text is not fully supporting it. I think it was the intent, for sure. But it's not what's all the way there. Did you feel Kayla was a lot like Purple Man? <laughs> uh, I felt like... I wish. <laughs> oh, that would have been the best movie if he was having an affair with Purple Man. Oh, fun. <laughs> 
But she obviously she had a touch instead of just a proximity thing. Wow. And she used her powers not strictly for self. Boy, if you yeah, if you use that movie for uh, murdering and raping, <laughs> or that power for murdering and raping, it's yeah, totally different movie. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, else? if you could use that power to rape Hugh Jackman, wouldn't you? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Was this a, <laughs> was that not a retort? Uh, I don't know who Kayla was supposed to be, but she's not a good... She was supposed to be an okay. American. She, <laughs> That's for sure. She, and she did argue she's got a little bit in her history just for when people were mad that she got cast. Okay, key gripe with Kayla. Kayla's powers. Key grip? I did. I was key grip on a movie once. So <laughs> for, uh, so we have the jokes here. Um, <laughs> Kayla, Kayla's power is she can tell people. People, people have to listen to her when she tells them what to do. Right, like that's her. Yeah, thing. she can control yeah. tell them by things. by vocally expressing to them. Yeah. What to do. Yeah. So at the she, very she, end, she, she, has a, she has a plus five of um, influence. Apparently, so, <laughs> for our D and friends, at the very end, Striker has a gun pointed to her, and there's a moment of tension where he's like, "Is she going to shoot her in the head?" And then he curves his gun around without her saying a damn thing. Does it? Was it Maybe. specific? But there's a moment where sh- she's she being doesn't. she's being like strangled or something from Sabretooth earlier. And she, like, squeaks out her command. Like, oh, my God, I need to be able to use my power in order to say this. It doesn't work on Sabretooth, right. but, like... Okay, so this is, like, when Jean Grey or anyone with, like, psychic power wants to do something, and so they put their two fingers up to the side of their temple. They don't need to do that, but that's, like, let's pretend that's not just a visual thing. Yeah. And that's helping them focus. But so, like, she, saying she, it out loud, like in Harry Potter, you don't need to say spells out loud, but, like, as you're learning, like, it helps, and that just makes it a lot easier. But is she able to influence people with vocal commands, or is she a telepath? This is super nerdy. Both. But it's important. No, it's actually, I don't, I don't a really she's a telepath. I never really thought about <laughs> I don't think she's a telepath in the gene grain. I think she can tell, kind of influence people without vocally she telling them. them yeah. yeah. And especially in moments, I would think, as this bears out with like other yeah. mutant powers, in moments of like high stress or like high adrenaline, like your powers are potentially even stronger or even more focused. So like she speaks out loud to assist it, but like yeah. in that moment of like near so death, how she does was she able die? To... She, was... she gets she... shot. That's she, did she, get she was somehow injured. It's, it's, and when... she comes in at the end. Being injured. <laughs> it's when she's helping all the. Um, she's probably shot in the crossfire with all the little yeah. mutants. Yeah. Because because she tells all the little mutants to go off, and then she looks down, and she's got like a bullet yeah. wound on her side. But she's still did she still did she do one her. last thing and tell Striker? Yeah. Man, Striker. And, and that was it. or does she? Like, I don't. I, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, and this is this is one moment I'm nitpicking, but no, that's, that's a fair. total fucking cop out. <laughs> I, I'm, what what is? No, her. Did she non verbally? <laughs> Uh, compels yeah. him after not exhibiting that power before. Uh, but also, I mean, this movie does a really bad job at sort of defining what anyone's powers are. <laughs> like, what is what is uh, Charlie's pa- um, Dominic West's power? <laughs> like, what what does Monaghan. he do? You can tr- or Dominic Monaghan. Dude not from Dominic Wire is not in this movie. He is not. Oh my gosh, I would love it. <laughs> I think he is every. He is everybody. He's off having no, an you affair. All, you all everybody. No. <laughs> He does. He does electricity, right? He yeah, he does electricity. electricity. He does electricity. I do. I do electricity all the time. Shooty yeah. guy is real good at shooting, I guess. Yeah. yeah. What is yeah. William? He's got like he tele- William has nightcrawler power. He has nightcrawler power. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said he liked Nightcrawler when he was auditioning, and so they gave him Nightcrawler power. Like that's his favorite. So he character. was supposed to be Nightcrawler. No. No, but it's no. just that he in the There's audition like process like he loves Nightcrawler, and so they gave mm-hmm. him that power. There's a few teleporters. Um, shooty, shooty guy, probably something along the lines of Spidey power, like well, being really good. And then what about sensing? And the guy from Mystery Alaska who has blob. blonde hair he and he is super or tough. I don't think he's Asian. Wait, he who's, looks Asian, right? He's got some small eyes. Who was the guy from Mystery Alaska? The the big guy, blob. No. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he so he's like Fine super out. strong and destructible. Like he yeah, punches yeah. his fist into a tank nozzle, but yeah. and it what, deflects. Why the do they have to go bomb? back to him in the end? Because that was really he let boring. himself go. Because it's X Men Origins. We're doing <laughs> the origins of several characters. Yeah, so we want to know why. Door. We want to know why the blob got so fat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, that's true. <laughs> that's funny. So, um, and then and I, then Gambit. Yeah. What are Gambit's powers in I this wish, movie? No, Gambit's powers are always crazy. Electricity slash explosive levitation s- slash levitation. A little bit levitation. Helicoptering with a staff. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, I think <laughs> supernatural <laughs> parkour. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's got them all. 
I'm going to say the levitation, it was with the cards. I, uh-huh. I think that was just a card trick. It was just like he was moving the cards and like the camera slowed and down. And we Zack Snyder did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that is... Yeah, this movie got a little Zack You know... That's absolutely true. I'll allow that. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. And, and we I, talked about it in that moment. I'm like, can you what? Because we don't understand And that is, it. like, I'm, I'm saying that this is what I think, what they are, I think they're saying his powers are. I will agree it is not done well. No. So I'm not trying to... I'm, that's not a point He breaks out me. a new yeah. power like every scene. Like, oh, Gambit yeah, can do that, I guess. French Canadian. I was wrong. I think he just has really small eyes. Oh, okay. That's, Oof. yeah. That but, makes sense. Yeah. Small eyes. Well, it could um, be his Inuit background, mm-hmm. maybe. <laughs> Inuit or Eskimo, apparently they are not mutually... They're mm-hmm. not interchangeable. And some so. people would say you can't say Eskimo, but I'm still not 100% clear on that. I mean, he looks a little bit... I can see why you would say that. It's it's the Eskimo or Inuit. I, yeah. I'm being serious yeah. when I say that. I, I, think, I think it's it a possible is. possibility. That's fair. Some First Nations <laughs> blood oh, going on in, in there. Oh, he was in the stray? Oh, he's been in everything. He's been a lot of things, yeah. yeah. Um, what are Wade Wilson's power? <laughs> oh, I did... I want... I, <laughs> Just I, keep going. I, I, was, I was about to have a joke, and I'm sad that I didn't get in there, as we were talking about all of Gambit's powers, but one of them is not being able to do a Cajun accent. <laughs> <laughs> Bullet slicing. That's weird. Oh, I love Gambit. Gambit is like the only guy who's made it off the island, and so he's like laying low by doing magical card tricks in New Orleans. He's wearing like <laughs> purple Gambit. velvet jackets. Like, that's not a low profile. Jury. <laughs> now, I think to me, I don't know. They are they are assuming a lot that shooting um, an, a gun like. I don't care if it's adamantium or whatever. If he has healing powers, he's going to... If the bullet comes out, he should be able to heal from it and get his memory back. But he does say... Strucker does say at some point, as that's their contingency plan, like, that's the only way to take him out. And they do address the, like, is that going to kill him? He's just going to heal. And he's like, no, but it's going to mess up his memory. But I still even disagree with that. Oh my god, that was was an actual (laughs) dialogue exchange in this movie. (laughs) I'm wondering, though... I still feel like there's a point where you do such maximum damage... That he could not fully recover from. And he I think was memory torn would... in half by the Hulk. I know this is comics and not movies, but and he he fixed himself. Did he grow Burn. new legs, or did they just put the two halves together? I and think they, kind they of put. Back together? I honestly do not know. Okay. I'm guessing. I wish there were two Wolverines, like each one just. Well, no, one would have to have a brain. We're having a we're having a no segment in our do podcast. They, do they establish nerd <laughs> <laughs> nerd alert? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We've been there for a while. Yeah, right. <laughs> do they establish that Creed is not as strong as Logan, just so there's tension when Logan's like threatening to stab him in the head later on, like? Oh my god, is he going to kill this guy who can also regenerate? Wait, the Creed wasn't it? as strong as... Lo- I thought yeah, it was the other way around. Do you feel like before they he did the skeleton physically, like he was meant to be stronger? Well, they make... they make. It felt like they were probably that, on the par with each other. He has that conversation with Stryker where he's like, I can survive it, and he's like, we both know that's not true. Maybe, I think possibly mentally he couldn't survive it. Like, he knows that... He can't. Victor that two is minutes of screaming him. is real. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> so so Creed is stronger than him and then he has the what's it Ant what is it called? Adamantium. 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 Injected into okay. him. And then mm-hmm. he has so when he has his metal um Adamantium. Mm-hmm. Adamantium. <laughs> I'm rejecting claws, the premise that Creed is stronger though. And then he's got Creed up he won every and then fight. until um what's his name? Yeah. Logan? No, the, Gambit? Gambit comes Gambit. up and like breaks it, or not breaks it, because he's So they're fighting. fighting, and then Gambit comes like, in, because he's mad, and like breaks up the tension. He's mad, bro. Uh, he doesn't come in, he helicopters in, He helicopters in, right? in his yeah. staff. Which is a thing he can do. <laughs> That's in his power set. You keep saying his staff, and I, I, I'm i picturing like a big group of people like behind him with his paperwork. and. <laughs> I've got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> Let me throw some cards your way. We we go one more scene and we find out that like being an awesome manager is also one of his kind. Of... <laughs> Motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Kitch is Canadian too. My question that about, explains it. My question about the memory <laughs> thing is, Lauren, do you think if he gets shot in in the head with an adamantium bullet a second time that he'll get his memory back? No. <laughs> Because that's Cause different from amnesia. I can't and, remember and if was it on this podcast that we talked about that. I don't okay, know. good. Was, was it? it? Was it? <laughs> I, I remember. remember. I remember we talked about it, but I. The guys, was a board game. I swear, I heard on a radio lab or something. That's like, right. Yeah, the argument that there's like 
not perfect, but like progressive maintenance. If like you hit your head and amnesia, like and it a was, blow could potentially. Oh, well, it was for only back. you, wasn't it? What are you talking about? I think so. <laughs> and we, and I swear it was Radio Lab or something. I, I, I thought Robert Krulwich was telling me. I thought we settled <laughs> that it was not Radio Lab. It was the, the Flintstones. I don't, yeah, I don't think it happened. <laughs> Uh, no, it was Jad Everard, and he wouldn't lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. You're so funny. Now, is there always going to be a... Adamantium can't heal, so in theory there's a hole in his metal-covered skull that if you shot him exactly in that spot again, like, that would probably kill him. No. Yeah, why not? This doesn't happen. I mean, I know he's gotten shot in the head before, but only because it bounced off against the. Uh, Do you think in in, no? Because the adamantium isn't what's protecting him, right? He can heal himself. Yeah, but it's still. But nothing can get through adamantium but adamantium. And in theory, there has to be a level of damage that could not be healed. Why? Because I say so. (laughs) <laughs> okay. No, when his power, so, when his power because, is at full force. Because if his po- his body deteriorates is something okay. that we, we yeah, suspect Logan, and then Logan confirms. Yes. And so there has to be a level where eventually at some point in his life and at some level of damage he could not heal himself. No. I yes. disagree. You're no. wrong. Because oh. the whole okay, the, <laughs> the whole plot of of the or the whole premise of the Wolverine is that he his powers as far as he knows, will will keep him alive forever, and someone's as offering. As far as he knows. But okay, <laughs> uh, well, now we're gonna get into Logan. It's been a while since we watched. Yeah. <laughs> was the was the implication in Logan that the adamantium was poisoning his body? That is, that is, I know yes. it's something they've done in the books, and yeah. I think that yes, I think it's still, I think it's part and parcel doesn't, that doesn't there has to be a point where he comes to the end of his life, where not, and at the same time, at like he cannot heal anymore, and so the adamantium poisons him. So sure like that. his healing deteriorating then leads to that. That's a good question. Or is it just the I fact would, that it's been in his body all no, the time? Right. That, was the, that was the assumption I had, was that the adamantium was taking its toll on his body, and so his powers were waning. And theoretically, and if you were to somehow get the adamantium off this body, he would completely heal again. And I disagree. I think it's the other way. And obviously, we're not book experts, so we have no idea which is Patrick the prevailing theory. Books right don't in matter. We have, we'll have to go to like an Elseworlds tale to see what would happen. I mean, if, I yes, if we consult see. Old Man Logan, we'll get an explanation, Patrick but it Stewart won't... Patrick Stewart confirmed that it was the adamantium. Like, did Patrick Stewart confirm it, yeah. or did <laughs> Professor X... Only because I don't... Because his healing is waning... And so, like, that's what protects him against the super poisonous metal, because now, he has his healing. Here's a question. His healing. Wait, then we'll never solve that one. In X-Men, the first one, did, he gets shot in the head, shot in the head, right? In the very first yeah. one? Yeah. But Lauren contends it's because it bounces gets, off the metal. He gets shot in number but, two, no, for sure. Yeah. Was it two? Okay. Yeah. But then, like, it didn't It didn't bounce off. It, like, he had, like, pushed he it back out. Pushed it out. Yeah. But he gets, like, shot in the, the, the war montage at the beginning of Bunch, right? For sure. Oh yeah, you can get shot. Yeah. He didn't have his enemy. By a firing squad. Yeah. Do you think though? He presumably super, they're shooting at the head. He can super heal. Oh. Like I'm not saying he can't, but I'm just saying, like shot in the head, that's no big deal. It takes some time. I don't think shooting in the same spot through the metal would be enough to kill him. I'm sorry, that was just a fun do, supposition. No, I was going to ask in in X Men Two. Do you think that was where he got shot, and that's how it went into his oh, head? Oh, that's why I was Very interesting. It's a very good point. That is a very good point. Because that's the only thing that explains it's, how it gets past his skull. It's very thin. Yeah. It got well past It was the like embedded skin. in something. So yeah. was unless he was shot in the eye, which I don't think he was. In the Wolverine, <laughs> he gets a <laughs> little fun. a warm thing in his heart and it attached to the heart and weakens him. Ooh. And he has to pull it out. He has to do so wow. it's yeah. been a while since we saw that one. I do that worm the tapeworm. That, that worm thing nothing. is designed specifically to sap him of his mutant powers though. It's and give them to someone else. And is it? Yeah, because it's the the, the 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 one guy who wants his the healing vineyard. powers. Yeah. The spoilers, the Asian spoilers man. for this. The Japanese I mean, it's, I mean, <laughs> Asian guy is not a spoiler because it's all set in Japan. They are so all it could be anybody. Asian except for <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> all right. And all then right. Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen at the end. Oh, spoilers. Wait, Ian McKellen at the end? Yeah. Never mind. It's okay. Oh, 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 of, um, of the Wolverine. Of I thought the Wolverine. You, I thought you were fascinated. Not at the end of this X-Men one. X-Men Origins. This had just had. <laughs> I just watched the Wolverine today. So the Wolverine ends, this is like, we're way off the rails now. The Wolverine ends without <laughs> and him. And not like a train retiring either. He does not have... <laughs> he does not have adamantium claws by the end of the Wolverine. He gets his adamantium claws chopped off, his bone claws heal... 
we know from like the last scene he has bone claws and the teaser at the very end leads right into days of future past where he once again has adamantium claws when the movie starts but it wouldn't be a big deal if X-Men, X-Men wasn't kind of wasn't trying to force continuity on all of its movies but, all the time. But did the Wolverine happen? Before Days of Future Past, yes. <laughs> How far before? Because it literally the the teaser is him walking into an airport, there's a commercial for for um Trask Industries or whatever, mm-hmm. and then uh, Professor X and Magneto are like, oh, something bad's gonna happen and we need you. But did he say but, no. come to us, we're flying to a weird monastery in Tibet? Or did he say, come with us, we're going to prepare for a few months and maybe like swing by like Alkali and pick that, up some adamantium. Oh, that um, would be interesting. <laughs> Professor X and Magneto forcing the adamantium process so on them again. That's dark. But, no, yeah. what, <laughs> what I was going to say is Days of Future Past rewrote all continuity. Mm-hmm. So maybe we're looking at a different timeline where the Wolverine didn't happen. But we yeah. went... <laughs> but the Wolverine, the end credits Wolverine starts... Or leads into the beginning of Days of Future Past. The beginning of Days of Future Past when happened we still no matter what. Felt the re- effects of the Wolverine. We haven't even and gotten no into reason. how the first class continuity doesn't at all fit in with the. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about main this continuity. after the show. <laughs> <laughs> we might not be able to the, on, do it on show, but we would need to, six hours. Since you are so fresh, we've been talking about wanting to do a marathon, and I'm yeah. so pleased you've done it. And, <laughs> and I think maybe it's just I really love this world because, yeah. and that's why I can I, I do feel like I can defend this because I also feel like oh I'm gonna put my foot in it, but um I might be able. I I did not hate the third one Wrong. when I saw it. You know what a weird side effect of my marathon was? Wrong. I realized I didn't really like a lot of these. <laughs> Wow. One and two didn't hold up for me as well as I thought really? they would. Yeah. And Apocalypse. I'll throw when, when we got, oh, that's that fair. Too. When we got two. to first class, I was finally like, oh, thank God, a movie that was as good as I remembered it the first time. But, wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so three didn't seem that bad. <laughs> no, three seemed really bad. <laughs> that's interesting. I will... Uh, Totally acknowledge like tone change for sure, and like there's story no change. no character so, work at all in the first two. Yeah, like the real, just like let's have the adventure. And in like Wolverine and Jean's relationship is such a key point for Wolverine in future movies. They have no relationship in the first two movies, and you can't even write it off and like as like they got really close between one and two because one ends with Wolverine leaving to check out Alkali. Two ends with him coming back and being like, hey, I'm back from that trip I took at the end of one. So we see every interaction that Wolverine and Jean ever have, and it's just him creeping on Jean, <laughs> who has, but like, a fiancé. That is the thing I don't like in the movies, even though it's a bit of the fun, like, oh, little romantic lover, Logan, I like that. But also, the that's a total... The movie serves Scott terribly, yeah. and he's a non-character, which is such a shame. And, like, their relationship is actually a thing, and they are, like, strong, and uh-huh. Wolverine, you know, loves her from afar, and, like, maybe there are moments of, like, uh, other possibilities, but, like, no, in the movies, Scott he... and Jean are a strong couple, and, like, Dude, that's unfair, Scott, because it's Wolverine's movie. There's no reason to hate Scott no. at all, because he's just, I he's mean, even dick. even as in the <laughs> like, we meet Scott, like, Wolverine's leaving a room in... Scott's just standing there, and Wolverine's like, "Get out of my way!" It's just so weird. Like, do you think this that ha- that is like a? They're they're assuming people yes. know the relationship, yes. so it's a, they're, just a short. They're doing hand. the sh- they're doing the short hand. Yeah. Okay. And Which shifting the focus because it's Wolverine's movie. Probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not made to be pure, like to the fans. Yeah. Obviously, like we're telling this character story, and then there are other yeah. people. Yeah. All right. Should we should we move on to our? Uh, can I can I run down? Please. Tell me if tell me if I, I I made a list of every character that was double dipped throughout the X Men series, <laughs> and I might have missed some. So, here we go: Sabretooth, Emma Frost, Toad, Angel, <laughs> Moira McTaggart, Nightcrawler, Spike, Jubilee, Colossus. Three actors played William Stryker. Three <laughs> actors played Kitty Pride. Caliban. <laughs> three actors played Beast. Mystique. Storm. Three actors played Cyclops, three actors played Team Grey, Magneto, and Xavier. All got double dipped at some point Who's in the, the X-Men series. actor playing Beast? Um, he's on a TV in X2. We see Dr. Hank McCoy oh, giving a right. yeah, yeah. TV interview. That's interesting. It is not Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that um, later on, 
Uh, Brian Singer said that the Emma in this movie is not Emma Frost. It just happens just, to be an Emma. Just an Emma with the exact, exact, same, exact powers. same powers. Hey, if, if you can have a Wade Wilson who goes by Deadpool, <laughs> according to me, who's a different person? And it really, yeah. Deadpool is not one of the double dips, because, you know, like, yeah. whatever. They That's even it. acknowledge the... Am I double dipping Can't continuity? Yeah. Fine, but it's like... One of the appeals of the X-Men is you have this huge universe of characters that you can draw from. Like, they have... What hundreds of characters that they could drop from the point where you're like double dipping Caliban? It's just like <laughs> it's insane to me. Like why do you, know you why do you feel tied to these characters? Why don't you? Because you really the, want to see a Dazzler movie. I know. I would other, love to see a Dazzler movie. <laughs> the other side of that though is, oh, well, I guess he doesn't come from the universe. But then you get the Will I Am character who is made out of whole cloth, and who like I don't know. I, I but you can have the Will I Am character introduced. But not that way, you know. Like yeah. they introduce Azazel, who basically is Nightcrawler in First Class. But like, that's fine, you know. Like, no, it's not really a, a big deal. It's just a new character, <laughs> you know. I don't know. You said Colossus, right? I did. Okay. That that one. That seat, one's only seat. if you count Deadpool yeah. as part of the universe. <laughs> But then again, Negasonic teenage whatever she was uh, <laughs> an original to the movie, so and she was badass. So yeah, she was fun. Yeah, great inclusion. Um, okay, so final verdicts. I'm gonna say you two, <laughs> Lauren, Bobby. I think you don't like this. Movie. Oh, we didn't talk about gender politics. Oh no, we'll get to that. Oh okay. All right, just well, I guess we. I'm doing things in whatever order. Okay. Well, yeah. Um. Yeah. No, this movie is not now, good. Okay, Bobby. I don't think it's the worst X Men movie. I think that that <laughs> honor goes to Apocalypse, but you this movie is pretty bad. You think it's the second worst? I do think it's the second worst. <laughs> now, Lauren, yes, I felt like, even though it's it's a joint defense of this two, I felt like I was defending it a lot more than you do. I'm curious <laughs> where you stand on this right but now. I was coming out and doing all my story and character explanations that you know the shorthand the movie didn't feel the need to cover. Um, I <laughs> my position and it's you know only maybe slightly like moved more in one direction but coming into this was just the obviously this is not the best x-men movie and i admit i've not done a marathon recently but i still hold a lot of them in very high regard i know this one is one of the lesser ones however i come from the point of view of but don't write off completely you know in as much as i love wolverine yeah. Love, you know, Hugh Jackman's interpretation of him. So the position that, like, this movie's not terrible, guys, is my point of view. And in revisiting it, there was a lot more. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that's not good. Oh, that's a little weird. <laughs> but it's still fun, and I still had a good time. And I'm going to agree with you and go a little bit further than it's not that bad and say it's, it is, yeah, it's an enjoyable, fun movie. Yeah. I, I thought it was fun. I, I, um, I, I was worried going into <laughs> it, like, oh, I haven't seen it since it was new. But um, I I think it held up for me. So, uh, Laura, <laughs> yeah, per your request, mm -hmm. uh, Bobby and Laura discussed gender politics in the movie we just watched. I got the eye of the tiger. Susan B. Anthony was on the dollar coin for a week. Stop objectifying me, Gloria Steinem. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Equal rights amendment was never ratified. Rosie the Riveter. Oh my God, Bobby, shut up. Rosie the Robot. Who's gonna make me my sandwich? My body, my choice. Blatant. Blatant. Susan B. Anthony was taken off the dollar for a reason. Beyonce. To be fair, we had talked about this after we watched the movie, and we thought, okay, this is good. So we're on the same page on this one, <laughs> but um. There aren't a lot of female characters in this movie, so we don't have to go into Thank great God, right? details. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> um, anyway, we, as Bobby so eloquently um, brought up the, the terminology fridged, um, so Kayla is fridged in the first part, first act of this movie, and then we later find out that she's actually working with Stryker because her sister is kidnapped. And so, and then she kind of, like, redeems herself at the end. I don't know. But the first part of it, I have a problem with her because she's just a really boring character. Like, there's not that much to her. And it's unfortunate because overall, like, if they're trying to show the arc of her, you know, the, she has a, this, like, 
journey where, you know, she's kind of in, in, in the same vein as Sabretooth um, or Creed, whatever you want to call the Shriver's character. But, um, yeah. you know, he's ba- he's good, bad, good, that kind of arc. Mm-hmm. Um, she kind of has a similar journey, but it's just like so underrepresented. Upper, ugh, sorry. Underrepresented represented in this movie there you go yeah i just i just felt like her character was just really sad like as a character and to use as a plot device to make logan angry to go you know against his old crew i just and to be desperate to go to striker i just like that's so tired yeah, I agree. It's a tired plot. So. Kind of sucks. She's a mishmash of like every lady character cliche in and the book. I don't even <laughs> like, know just... if it's the act. I don't really know the actress from no, any other fine. thing. I mean, but I I don't think it's her. I think it's the her job character. is to look hot and be a cliche. Like yeah. that's that's that is the entire Kayla role, and I don't know. And it's the only speaking female role in the movie, except for the doctor. Ma Kent and the doctor, <laughs> <laughs> and the mom at the beginning. Does Emma say anything? Oh, yeah. The Emma Mo- Frost. Oh, Emma she Frost. has a line. That's right. I forgot Emma Frost is in this Oh, story. and then she does a lot of cool, like, weird contortion with her body. <laughs> to, like, hey, is the time Emma time. Frost diamond skin ever going to look good in anything? No. Or is it always going to yeah. look shitty? It's yeah. a silly weird thing to do. Yeah. It's worse um, than... There's no reason... Vampires. There's I don't reason. know. That they, that they, I think for adapting it for the movies, they should just say she has diamond heart skin and leave it at that and not make it appear uh-huh. as diamond. I think if you're going to do it, that would be the good way to do it, but whatever. Um, I will say, I, I don't think the whatever, I, Kayla was like good, bad, good. I think she was good, used, and therefore using Logan, and then good. So, you know, you know, redeeming herself. But Sam, I'm, I'm is nitpicking. it called Sam's gender politics? No. <laughs> oh, I thought you wrapped things up. No. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the rebuttal. Okay. Are, there are no rebuttals. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Anything more about gender politics then? <laughs> Oh, so it was wrapped up. <laughs> it was wrapped up. <laughs> All right, let's do uh, IDOBM. I am Why don't we ever talk about male gender oh. politics? I think that no. would be a fair <laughs> thing to do in some movies. Well, yeah, I think that would be, but I mean, usually females are underrepresented. I really don't like the way Logan was objectified physically mm-hmm. in this movie. I'm pretty sure you saw his dick when he jumped into the waterfall. <laughs> yeah, you did. Two. Oh, second, yeah, not, second, not, not. second instance of PG-13 dick we've, we've had in this, in this so, podcast. So, as we were watching it, uh, I, I, I pulled, I, I don't remember what I was going to look up, but I pulled, looked up X-Men Origins Wolverine, and there was like an 11-hour-old article about how um, he revealed on Howard Stern, uh, Hugh Jackman did that at the, for the rap, his rap gift was all the footage of his penis. They did. <laughs> there was a lot of his penis, and he said he burned it, so Aww, it's all gone. To the CD. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be released. Yeah. I, uh, I found an interview from Hugh Jackman where he was talking about how this movie was going to be this movie was going to be like a real dark, kind of grittier take on the character, <laughs> a la Batman Begins. This was the same year The Dark Knight came out. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oof, yeah. Okay. okay same year as The Dark Knight oof. and Iron Iron Man? Was that the same year? That does put it into awful loop. Terrible I, context. I, I, it doesn't... Well, I mean, that that's totally fair If because that this movie feels a lot older, but at the same time, the franchise feels older. I mean, is older. It is. So, I mean, so, by all means, X-Men started the modern... Yeah. Comic book but, superhero movie. So, so, so I don't know. I don't know how saying it feels older is. I don't know how much is like. Oh, this movie looks a lot older, and how much of it is like. Oh, well, it's just this part of this whole thing that was older. Yeah. Wow, that's weird. Two, is it two thousand eight? Two thousand nine? I thought it was two thousand nine. I could be wrong. It okay. It, uh, it does not feel that new, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um. So yeah, let's do. Uh, hopefully I won't get interrupted. Uh, Ideal BM IMDb trivia to you. 2009. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to clarify, everyone. If I can say one more thing. <laughs> I already got it out. So no, perfect. that's 2009. Now you're interrupting Lauren. So <laughs> oh, I David Benioff wrote this? Yeah, that, that was my first one. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Laura. <laughs> are you literally, are you literally <laughs> reading the IMDb trivia out <laughs> loud? No, I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just saw it. No. No, we had talked about this earlier, so this is not new. No, this is my segment. <laughs> I'm just Step adding down. stuff. Okay. Step down. <laughs> so, guys, you might not know this, 
But the lead scriptwriter and main credit is actually David Benioff, who, of course, we all know writes Game of Thrones, which is oh. excellent. And speaking to what we've just said about him thinking it was going to be hardcore, that was the initial intent. Oh, of that's the movie. why he, it's obje- objectifying women. Because, you know, Game of Thrones at that, that time. I would like to point out David Benioff also wrote Troy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's written bad things too. <laughs> but he's gotten so much better. But just the, like, that was the initial intent for the script. They were going for an R rating. His vision was a lot darker, more brutal. They probably would have had bloody claws and actual, like, Logan-level violence. But then they, you know, were forced to par it back and bring it to the PG-13 rating uh, for the I bet family. he's pissed off now that Logan is that. Like, oh, they're finally <laughs> doing R rated. It's not... Like, it's hard to make a good PG-13 rated superhero movie, as evidenced <laughs> yeah. by almost all of the good PG-13 oh, okay. I'm not saying like, that that's the yeah. fault, but I'm saying, I it, think it leads into the cross-purposes of, like, this vision that was initially what launched yeah. the ship is now being mm-hmm. compromised, and you guys can't keep up with that. Yep. Um, and, you know, the according to Gavin Hood, there was lots of script rewriting because the process was a mess, and, like, what? on-set rewriting scenes and hastily, like, cobbling together stuff. I could not. Uh, I would of have course you guessed. could. But doesn't that make you feel better that, like, okay, this wasn't someone's, like, labor of love that took them a year of their life. Like, this is shoddy on-set, like, last-minute rewrites. That helps a little, although that should never made to film in some of the humans. <laughs> but then Die Hard did it, and look how amazing Die Hard That's is. That's a good point. So, when you start with that, yeah. they just didn't have the creative amazingness. Yeah, they didn't have, um, <laughs> I'm just blanking out his name, the director of Die Hard. I should totally know his name. <laughs> For some reason, I keep wanting to say Robert uh, Altman, but that is definitely... <laughs> no, there wasn't enough people talking over each other. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I was really excited when Wolverine came out, because the Ender's Game movie had been in, like... John McTiernan. John Go McTiernan. Ahead. Good job. The Ender's Game movie had had been in like stuck in pre-production, not even pre-production, but it was like you know it was being getting thrown at creative teams for like a decade, and then I think at this point Gavin Hood and David Benioff were attached to to the <laughs> Ender's Game movie, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's great! And then I watched Wolverine, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> Ender's Game is a terrible, terrible movie. By the way. I was gonna say it, it did not work out. <laughs> I don't know well, if David but... Benioff made it to to the end of Ender's Game, but <laughs> Gavin Hood did. Oh, did he? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's not terrible surprise. See if they freaking. Um, I was surprised because I certainly heard about that Ryan Reynolds wouldn't be attached to Deadpool, but back going back to two thousand four, they've been working toward a Deadpool movie and working out with uh, David S. Goyer directing and Ryan Reynolds starring, and I didn't realize it went that far back. And so when he heard they were going to have Deadpool in this movie, you know, he immediately approached the filmmakers to get into the role. He was just supposed to be a cameo beforehand. And according to, you know, reporting, they expanded it now that they had Ryan Reynolds attached, which still Oof. feels like you misused that gift is what happened there because you make him not talk for half the movie. Yeah, yeah the merc with the mouth. Which, the merc without a mouth. Was it Ryan Reynolds um, at the end? Was it really him or no. was it someone else? It's another guy. Was it really? Yeah, it was. Right. Where do you get your trivia? That's pretty good. <laughs> I, just, I just know this thing. <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. They had two separate credits for Deadpool too, uh, on Wikipedia. <laughs> so he technically was double dipped. You feel- oh, oh it's the same movie. Guys, I've already expressed my intense love for Leo Schreiber. He's an amazing actor. He worked on Kate Leopold with Hugh Jackman. And, yeah, do you, you know, like Kate Leopold? Friend. No, it's a bad movie with great <laughs> actors. Uh, that's still kind of like, as you watch it, you can't help but have an emotional reaction because Hugh Jackman is incredible and Leo Schreiber is an amazing actor. And so Hugh actually um, recommended him for this role. They wanted him initially to wear a muscle suit to get all his rippling Victor Creed muscles. And he's like, no, screw that. And he did the work to bulk up for like 40 pounds wow. of muscle. He's shy. Yeah, he did, you know, Hugh Jackman's routine of like killing tons of chickens and just protein. Just like beheading them, like ripping yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Like, it gets like a muscle group that you Squeezing can, yeah. their juice <laughs> into your mouth. Do they, do they have to like watch the baby chicken? Like they have to like raise the chickens and then like when they're of age, they. It's like the emotional, like, yeah. Yeah. you attach them you and you give them What they do is they. It's like the kings. They, they take the mothers and they slaughter them in front of all the little chicks. <laughs> so they can, they Guys, know what's. I just meant he ate a lot of protein. <laughs> <laughs> and he called it. A genocide of chickens, and that was uh, cute because he's a funny, amazing guy. Who, and Hugh Jackman or Lee Schreiber? because he's incredible and beautiful, <laughs> and good for him. For I think he's Paul. single now too. And they stuck him in a trench coat. Uh, yeah. She's not. I know. It's such a waste, right? Like he's so like bulked and like show that off. Come on. That's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> Wait, that they did what? And then they shoved him in a trench coat yeah. from the movie. He didn't get to show off all that work. 
Such a shame. <laughs> the non cape cape. <laughs> That's a really good point. That's, no capes. Yeah, that's what coats trench coats are. are like, yeah. I'm going to swirl out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like it. All right, my last one that I like and just did the fun. So, um, obviously... I have one more after you, so... Oh, oh. That's cool, then. But mine's going to be the best. Um, <laughs> Hugh Jackman very proudly, like, bulked up, did all the work, like, did not want any CGI to perfect his body. Like, when he comes out of that adamantium water, he is, like, glistening, this is my body perfection, and you can't see my penis, but it's there. They did have a screaming <laughs> double, though. Well, yeah, obviously, because that would hurt his poor yeah. singing throat. <laughs> and so, <laughs> after he, you know, gets his calls, he obviously runs naked out of the facility... And which they had to do several takes, obviously. In an interview, Hugh Jackman stated that during one of the takes, several of the female crew members were waiting around the corner, cheering and waving $1 bills as he <laughs> ran by. That's fun. I would do it. If I were on set. Um, do you think that he saw the uh, CGI for the claws and that's when he's like, no, guys, I'll take care of this myself. <laughs> you don't need to do that's anything. Funny. Like, nah, I trust you. I'll go lift a few more weights. <laughs> that was so bad. How could they it's think that was unreal? How bad yeah. that is. It's like that's like reshoot it the, with prosthetic claws yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah, it's like all the money went into paying Hugh Jackman's bill. I'm like, that's all we got. We have no budget for this movie. <laughs> a lot of the movie, I think, feels that way a little bit. Like this, what? So go ahead and usurp Lauren's segment, Laura. Oh no, I have I don't some know what really you're interesting doing, like, things. No, that, no, it's a fun agenda. Things you said one thing. <laughs> Did you know that, there, that that scene in Africa? There is a young girl with white hair. It's supposed to be Storm. Yeah, I didn't find that one interesting. So I I no, I'm just kidding. That one is fun. <laughs> That's a fun one. Oh wait, um, so Storm has been played by three characters yeah. <laughs> for by three actors on my list now. Do you want to do you want to talk about gender politics, Lauren? <laughs> yes, I do. No, they're pretty much right on that. It'd they were, be nice they to were have more throwing than one, one dollar bills. One dollar bills at him. It would be one dollar so... bills. That's too much. One dollar bills. Oh my that's, gosh, my Lucy Hall was going to be like, striker. I know that'd be that's interesting. interesting. Right? Huh. I would actually like to agree with that, even though it is you know the seventies and we're jerks, or the eighties. No, it was through my line. It officially was the late seventies. Yeah, there could have been a lady in Enigma Force Five. There was no oh, reason yeah. like the I whole agree. crew had to be boys. I agree, especially when you're dealing with mutants, because you're like. If this person has this amazing power, we gotta put this in it. We exactly. gotta put him in the thing. Yeah. She could. You know I mean, chronologically, this takes place after First Class, right? I mean, everyone... and after Future Past, I would think. Well, this is brain hurty. Yeah. <sighs> Future Past takes place in seventy. Three. This is Three Mile Island was we 79. About, we're, that, like, we're assuming that the destruction of Three Mile Island would probably coincide with the yeah. meltdown. Just like and it was to cover with up the uh, meltdown. Cuba Missile Crisis. So that'd be 79. Using actual. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is uh, fucking Hardy? serious. Yeah. <laughs> you know Gamma's real love name? Remy LeBeau. Remy LeBeau. Yeah. You know what LeBeau stands for? The handsome one. Yeah. He's not, though. That's a weird thing. Oh, cool. <laughs> He was in the car. Bugger off. <laughs> wow. Bugger off. Uh, Bugger so, off. <laughs> so let's uh, talk about the movie we wish we'd seen. Ugh, this movie is crap. I could write a better movie in my sleep. And now, IDOBM presents the movie we'd wish we'd seen. That is, of course, when we take an aspect of the movie. Uh, there have been so many sequels and prequels to this that uh, obviously you could go with that. Um, just some aspect of this movie that you would like to see more of. Uh, Bobby, you go. Um, well, I already mentioned I think the more interesting movie follows the Wolverine origin comic more closely, and it's about Wolverine as a kid. But also, I think Wolverine is more interesting when he's not facing the demons of his past. Like, I think Wolver like, you know, when you look at a movie like Days of Future Past, it's kind of fun that Wolverine is the grown-up, or not necessarily grown-up, but he's the one who's who's entering a situation to fix it rather than moping about his own past. And mm-hmm. so I think kind of like a, since you have hundreds of years to work with, with Wolverine, I think a movie where he is kind of like a Mad Max figure, kind of like wanders into a situation, helps a bunch of people with his big metal claws, and then wanders out of that situation and onto the next thing would kind of be fun. Yeah. So. That's cool. Uh, Can I? I, Oh, oh, go for it. I want to jump into that. That that made me think of something cool. That, again, the movie was trying to 
explore the darkness in Wolverine. And obviously I would much rather see the R-rated, like full dark, full consequence Logan style. I'd like to see more of, you know, his beginning and his origin and the actual history with like his parents and then his actual biological father is interesting and we could spend a little more time with that. But sort of going into what Bobby was saying, which made me really think about it, that the premise the movie tries to run is Wolverine's fight over whether or not he will succumb to his animalistic baser urges Mm -hmm. or continue to be a good person. I would like to see much more exploration of that plot. And also the duality of the moment when he loses his memory as actually being a restart for him. That the darkness of a hundred years of life and seeing all that drama. And they kind of try to touch on it. There was discussion of like they wanted to have PTSD and that was cut out because it was too dark. But like have that and have him really have the weight of those years on him. And so to lose his memory is an opportunity for him to, fo- like his moment to become the good person because the darkness of everything he's done is gone. Yeah. And so now. Sounds good. That, that would, be, would cool. be cool. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll go. Uh, since this one, uh, it was supposed to be the start of, there was supposed to be a several X-Men Origins movies. Um, and I, I would like to see something you don't see a lot in movies these days. Um, because this kind of showed that you don't necessarily need a whole full out. Like, there have been plenty of times where we've seen origin stories over and over again, and and we see a lot of them. I would like to see an actual anthology uh, movie, and it wouldn't even necessarily have to be like, here's a segment, here's a segment, here's a segment. They could be intertwined, but where we're doing just origins, maybe with a little bit of an arc, Two, three, or four characters. I think that would be really cool and That's neat. Fun. Can that yeah. color be in there? I don't see why not. Yay! Yeah. And, um, yeah. You would like to see short, 30 short films about mutants, is essentially, I think. Thir- Thir- 30s? Maybe maybe over the series of the series <laughs> okay. of movies. Okay, you don't want it to be like Glenn Gould, then you want it to be. <laughs> and, 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 and each one can be as long as it wants, and it could be a series of different directors. That would be cool. I mean, you could, you could yeah. see that on a directed DVD thing, like, or directed Blu ray. Like what they had, um, let, was it Dark Knights? They did that with Batman. Like different directors and different animators tell different stories. But I don't see why it wouldn't work uh, in a feature film as well. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, Laura? Um, I don't think I want to see this movie. I said earlier <laughs> that. And I, no, I don't mean like, I just don't think I need the origin story of Wolverine. And so <laughs> that's my feeling. I, I like kind of not knowing about him i i like just the the other movies just watching the other x-men movies with him and kind of seeing like bits and pieces of his past come out but not the full story i don't i think it's more interesting as a character that way and i don't i don't know like there is his origin in the comics which is good and you know people can research it if they want to but i don't need to see that so that is what I think. Okay, that's fair. Uh, so before we... Oh, oh, that's right. Um, I forgot to do this last time. Let's uh, talk about things that need no defense. Anyone want to go first? Just like whatever you're into right now. Um, I'll go. Go. Okay. Um, I would like to highly recommend on Amazon right now, they're going through their pilot process, and Amy Sherman Palladino has submitted Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and it is awesome. It's just the first episode, but it's such a solid pilot, and it's kind of like an apotheosis of Amy Sherman Palladino. Like, it has all of her great wit, but it's really well told, streamlined, and there's not all the nonsense that sometimes happens in her things. And I have really great hopes for the series. So I would highly recommend going on Amazon to watch it and then, you know, rating it really highly so they pick it up. Cool. Uh, I have a Marvel comic to recommend. Um, I'm making my way through Vision, which is a recent comic book series about the character Vision, um, setting up a quiet life in the suburbs with his wife and two kids. And it sounds kind of like a comedy premise, but the series is really bleak and really kind of existentially Mm. horrifying and depressing. And I really like it so far, and I would recommend everyone go read it. So, Vision. It's great. How about you, Laura? Um... (laughs) I am actually having fun rewatching Monk. 
It's a, hmm. I mean, it's such a silly show, but it's so fun. Tony Shalhoub is delightful in it. I don't know if anyone watched it when it was on. But, I did. Um, I quite I like that. the show a lot. And it's funny to see it age because it's so different. Back, you know, like It's glossy. Yeah, it was just like, yeah. it's not as tech savvy as now, but it's just fun to watch it. It's a silly, fun show. And Tony Shalhoub's really good at it. And Tony Shalhoub is in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Just is he? Now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Plays a dad. Yeah. I didn't d- say what it was about either. I feel like that's stupid. It's, oh, that's too bad. Your, your so time is, this, your turn is it's over. It's this, like, perfect 1950s housewife who, like, gives her whole life to her family, and then her husband leaves her, and, like, she stumbles into the world of 1950s New York comedy scene. It's fun. Oh, that does sound really interesting. It was a good thing you brought that up. Uh, so for me, I'm going to stay in the X universe, and I'm going to recommend FX's show Legion. Who uh, I tried watching that first episode, and it's oh, so good. The first, I don't like, so I don't it is, it like, is trippy. You're it's, supposed it's, to feel like you're going insane. I, I, it's to have you it's really good. It, it is. It keeps you on your toes. You're, you're not supposed to know exactly what's going on. Okay. And um, I, I will say, it's from the people who did um, uh, Fargo. Fargo, you have, have, you have, have, you have to say it. Noah Hawley. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't know names, um, but which I love the Fargo series. So and and I'm excited about season three. So uh, it was a shoe in. I mean, it's X X Men stuff, Fargo stuff. So of course, uh, I, even so, I was still after that first one. I'm like, okay, this is really interesting. But um, I, I I the next few episodes were to me a little bit of a sloth. I know everyone else. Thought, it seemed like that they were good but just recently the last few episodes they're really picking up they're really doing something interesting with the show and it's extremely visually dynamic and it's still keeping you on your toes you're still not always 100 percent sure uh what's reality and all that good stuff and it's a super fun show so i would recommend that especially if you like mutant stuff it's really good i know mm-hmm. or if you like it. dan stevens just Ocean blue eyes. <laughs> Just get lost in them. It's his power. Quick cat shooting away. <laughs> Intermission. So uh, now it's time for plugs. I'm going to say April 2nd, uh, Sunday, April 2nd, will be our season opener, the upperclassmen season opener. 7 o'clock, Long Beach Playhouse. For our first show, we're doing something a little bit different. The first half is going to be entirely, uh, entirely sketch comedy. It's going to be sketches that we wrote in the group and our, our performing. And then the second half will be long-form improv, which um, will be interesting because we haven't really done that in a public setting before. So that'll be fun. You can get tickets from any upperclassman for five bucks ahead of time. Or if you want to be a chum, you can pay $10 at the door. But just come and see it. It'll be fun. Only ten dollars? Why well, I'd pay tons more to see that level of entertainment. <laughs> you can. Would I'll, you I'll sell you pre sale tickets for more if you'd like. Oh. But <laughs> I would totally I just have something to do that day. I'm sorry. <laughs> just... Uh anyone else have anything to plug? Go to our website, ID IDOBM Podcast, please. Hmm? I'd say that if you're going to be at the Long Beach Playhouse on April 2nd, you might as well just spend your whole weekend there because they're actually producing their new works festival Friday and Saturday night. And I'm actually appearing in both plays. The New York Festival is great at Long Beach every year. They get several submissions. They go through, they pick the two best, and they do a stage reading for one night only. Um, It's a suggested suggested donation of $10, but obviously... You don't have to pay anything. You could go in paying nothing and just receive silent resentment from the theater staff. But that's all. And come and see two new works. They're really exciting and interesting. And again, I'm in both. So Look at this couple of performers. We're like a regular Hepburn and Tracy, y'all. Oh, gosh. He's Hepburn. <laughs> How about you, Laura? Um, no. I, so you can go to... Oh, you can go to our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, you could do that, but you could also go to our website. Or in our website, yeah. You could email us. You could you could put that mm, one out there. You can email us. Do you know us. our address? No. Yes. In it's defense of bad movies at gmail.com. What? In defense of bad movies in at gmail. In defense of bad movies at gmail.com. Email <laughs> us. Email us. Go on yeah. iTunes and rate us. Because, guys, people who have done that in the past have been guests on the show. That's guys, the way to get that's, on here. That's how low our part is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, 100% of real people who have emailed us have gotten their email... Um, on the show <laughs> so it is a really good way to get three people to listen to your email 
I mean, aside from us. You could very cleverly, like, sneak in an ad for something like, you guys are great and I love the show. Come down to Al's Car Barn. Yeah. Oh, my God. If you want to sponsor one of our segments, we could... We, we're not we're not below saying gender politics brought to you by... <laughs> not at all. So, uh, any, any last parting words before we call it a night? We got through... A fairly long episode on X-Men Origins Wolverine without mentioning once Wolverine dropping to his knees and screaming at the sky. So. <laughs> do you want to do that now? Mission accomplished. Do you want to recreate that moment for us now? No. Is, is that like uh, Darth Vader's no moment for you? No. <laughs> it's like oh. <laughs> Darth Vader did that moment four times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Take care. We are. In defense of bad movies. I decided to go out with our name, too, so it sticks with people. Cool, that's nice. What's our name again? In defense of bad movies. Also, if you put the emphasis on different words, it helps people. In defense of? Bad movies. Bad movies? All right. Defense in... Wait, what's our name again? In defense of bad movies. Bad movies? I I do BM for short. You do BM? Do you want to do that and then (laughs) tell me what the name of our podcast is? Let's see how long this segment can last. This bit. All right, thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye. Do you guys want frozen yogurt?